Just a sample of some of the hits worldwide of In Excess, one of the greatest rock and roll bands of our time. They've sold over 35 million albums worldwide. They've chart topping across the world with songs like that. 15 million album sales in the US alone. Uh, the backbone of the band, of course, are the Farris brothers, Tim, John, and Andrew. They remain the driving force. But today, across the world, they have announced that they have a new lead singer. His name is Kieran Gribben. He comes from Castle Dawson in Northern Ireland. We may, and we actually do know him from uh, being a singer-songwriter here in Northern Ireland. Uh, last year, we broke an exclusive on this show as well, where he got involved with Paul Oakenfold and co-wrote the massive hit Celebration for Madonna. He's been involved doing the soundtrack for the film Killing Bono. He's basically one of the nicest guys in the world. And we go live to Australia to welcome the new lead singer of In Excess, Kieran Gribben. Kieran, good afternoon. <laughs> How are you, my man? How's it going? Well, I'm do- I'm doing all right, but what about you? Yeah, it's just uh, unbelievable. I, you know, I'm listening to to all those those uh, wonderful hits you just played uh, down the line here now. It, it it really is emotional for me. I'm I'm on the line now uh, with you with uh, Andrew Farris. Uh, hey, who, Alan. Who, hey. who wrote all those massive hits, and you know. It's just it, you know, I've, I, you know, and a lot of people in Northern Ireland will have known that I've been knocking around for quite a, a long time, and to to hear those words that I'm now the singer in In Excess is just unbelievable. Well, I'm just, I can't believe it. Well, we're having texts and emails coming in left, right, and centre from people in Northern Ireland who are so happy for you, uh, Andrew Farris. Good afternoon or good evening. What time is it in Australia? Yeah, well, I think I think it's actually the morning. It's good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, well, it's twelve thirty a.m. Yeah, and uh, but I, I always get up at twelve thirty. You know, um, <laughs> I, I have a strange feeling there'll hardly be too much sleep. But um, Andre, where did you guys first meet? Well, that's a good question. And we were actually at a, um, a mutual friend. Uh, you know, it was just a, a casual gathering, um, and there was a few people, uh, you know, sitting around playing guitars, and we were just. You know, having fun, and you know, it's basically a small party. And um, I'd met Kieran, you know, in that situation, and there was a few other people playing instruments. We both, you know, picked up guitars and started, you know, horsing around. And before long, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, who's this guy? <laughs> uh, and 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 I, I thought he just had an amazing voice, and I, I liked his songs. And then I realised, you know, that, that oh, I, you know, I thought that. Uh, there'd be something there, you know, for us to talk about musically. And we still didn't really think about it that much. You know, it was really just a social sort of, you know, hey, mate, how are you, sort of thing. And then uh, as time progressed, we sort of thought, well, you know, I realised we could you know, see a lot of opportunity to write songs together. So it was just something that sort of, I don't know, it was really quite um, spontaneous, really, I guess. Well, I suppose songwriting, uh, it's quite an organic thing, and you've been songwriting since 1977, 78. What, you, must, you must have seen something very, or heard something very special in Kieran's work. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you know, I think Kieran has one, you know, a, one of the most amazingly distinctive, you know, voices of our time, uh, you know, and I, and I know that he, that he, you know, because now I've worked and written with him, I, I know he also has, you know, some fairly similar, uh, you know, sort of taste in, 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 well, both with songwriting and in music, and uh, and that gives us a lot of common ground to, to sort of to, to explore. And also, uh, you know, I when I began to realise the depth of his career and his own songwriting credits, I, I've got to tell you, I was I was very impressed, and I thought, you know, this this could really uh, lead somewhere, you know. So whenever you started working together, when when did you know, Andrew, that there was there was a spark? There was just something there that you hadn't heard for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, it was sort of it sort of I don't know how to put it. It just sort of came left of field. I, I, the irony of it is, I, I really wasn't looking for for any you know for for a sort of great songwriting partnership or to to, to, to for it to lead kind of where it's gone. It was really just, it felt like a sort of, it was all meant to happen and then is meant to happen. Uh, would you say that, Karen? You know? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I was at a stage in my musical life where I was, you know, I was just a wee bit disillusioned by where I was going and I, I was trying to pull back maybe from uh, the gigging front and focus more on, on soundtracks for movies and, and writing for other artists, you know, and it was, 
you know, and I, I'd already met Andrew at this stage, and we hadn't written together, but I, I literally uh, a week after I sort of made up my mind that I was sort of, you know, maybe I'll focus on, on movie soundtracks and that type of thing, uh, I got the call from Andrew, and he said, and it wasn't like, do you want the job or anything like that, it was like, do you fancy coming down to Australia and doing a bit of writing, because I was listening, to, you know, he'd been listening to my stuff, and, you know, we'd 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 met a good time before that, and we'd become friends over over time and any time I was in Australia doing gigs or whatever we'd meet up or you know and, and just generally hang out it was it was very natural it was very uh, organic there was no uh, you know it wasn't planned from day one or anything like that I think we you know the friendship blossomed and the respect for each other blossomed but we we you know when we got in that room to write songs it just it just worked it, it, songwriting co-writing with someone is, is all about chemistry and uh, and if you haven't got that, well, then you're you're basically wasting your time when you're co-writing with someone. It doesn't matter how great you think you are or how great the other person is. Um, it just wasn't working. And the one thing about Andrew is, for someone of of that caliber, a songwriter, and he genuinely is a top world class songwriter. Um, there's no ego. And I, I in the room with him, I felt at ease from day one, and I felt that I could speak my mind and. And, and bring something to the table and we just it just chemistry is there and, and we just worked and and that's where it all sort of stemmed from it, it came from that sort of that the love of writing songs together and you know and and <laughs> before i know it i'm i'm in a having a drink with all the rest of the in excess boys <laughs> and we're talking about maybe getting together and playing some music and it just it just was crazy and i i actually still cannot believe i'm here You're, if you see, if the people who know me at back home can see where I'm at now, I'm, I'm in this wonderful, wonderful studio in a, in a, a really remote part of Australia. Um, just, you know, the, the stars above us, you can see the Milky Way. There's no light pollution. It's just, you are literally in the middle of nowhere with this wonderful, wonderful studio. And uh, So it is a bit like <laughs> Castle Dawson then? Well, it's very much not like Castle Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> This place, but it's uh, it's wonderful. It is, and I'll tell you what. There's a very happy, happy Castle Dawson man in Australia at this present moment in time. And, and Kieran, well, I actually, actually, my son, uh, Matty, uh, walked here before and told me there was an owl in his bedroom. <laughs> uh, so I had to get that out of the room. But uh, <laughs> so we really are in the middle of nowhere. But I was just going to say also about you know what we were talking about before and um, you know how we met and everything and we're you know uh, hooking up. And for Kieran meeting socially the other guys and in excess and everything, I think you know it's interesting because to me when I look back on it all, um, it's it's amazing really because we sort of met through mutual friends and then Kieran's you know got some uh, family extended family uh, down here in Australia as well and uh, you know we we sort of really met socially really all of us it's quite quite strange like that you know when you when you've done something professionally for so many years it's really interesting. Actually. I think maybe that's the Northern Ireland way that we make friends so easily. Uh, you, there you go. You probably well, you half the Australians are Irish anyway. You know, <laughs> that's so true. They can, get, <laughs> yeah. they can get on with it pretty easy. Well, as far as recording goes, we do have one song. We do have one song. That's Tiny Summer. That's uh, that's on the website inexcess dot com for people to listen to. It's not available as yet. But what about the recording process, guys? Are you going to get something down? Well, yeah. I mean, at the moment, we're we're really, uh, you know, focused on, on on songwriting, and we've had a great reaction to Tiny Summer, uh, actually overwhelmingly positive, and uh, that was really the first, you know, sort of horse out of the gate, if I can put it that way. Um, but uh, it's not a really good expression, I suppose, for a song. But yeah. uh, we've got, you know, we've got some ideas of recording. It's more that I think, you know, without the songs, you don't have the recording. Really? Well, that, yeah. that's the foundation, I suppose, of everything. Kieran, tell me something though. We we know how big, or we think we know how in ex- how big in excess are in Australia. Like this yeah. must have been the biggest secret in the world. This must be like winning the lottery and trying to keep it quiet. How did you do it? Well, uh, to be honest, I I don't know how we were able to keep this quiet for so long because we you know we were sort of. We didn't know where the way this was going to go either, you know, and it wasn't so much of, of, of sneaking around. It was very much a case of, you know, Andrew was, you know, believe he believed in my own ability, but there's, there's no doubt about it. The in excess are, you know, what, you know, they are, they are the biggest band in Australia, have been and always will be. Uh, you know, they are t- 
to Australia what U2 is to Ireland. You know, they're that type of legendary status. And I know, I know from from everybody, and I've been following quite a few comments on the Facebook and and, and everything over the last uh, few days. When no one knew who I was, everyone had heard this song "Tiny Summer," and everyone was going, "Who is this guy?" You know, Andrew had posted a thing on, on the website just saying that he'd he'd met a, an Irish bloke and. Uh, we got on well, and we, we decided to write this song, and it was just a demo. It wasn't a big professional recording. We recorded in Andrew's uh, tiny little writing studio, and and uh, you know, I think the the enormity of all of this hasn't really hit me. I, I I know the legacy that's left behind of someone as great a singer and a songwriter as Michael Hutchins. I know that I you can never fill those shoes. Uh, all you can do is respect what was there before and try your best to when I walk out on that stage to give the fans, you know, my best attempt of, 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 of what I can do with those wonderful songs. And, you know, I'm, it's, not, it's not as if I'm going to go out and try and be a clone of, of Michael Hutchins. I don't think that's what they want, and I don't think that's what the band want. What we want to do is, is pay tribute to that legacy that's left behind, but also the band are very, very much interested in going forward with new material, and that's, that's right. that, that is very much why I'm here. It, it's, it's a, it's, there's two prongs to all of this. There's, yes, there's a live element and the history of, of what the, you know, the weight on my shoulders I know is, is, is great, but the fact that these guys believe in what I can do as a singer and as a performer speaks, you know, it, it takes the pressure off me. I know that I'm in good hands and, you know, there's no egos in this band. This is the other thing about it. For a band who have, have done what they've done and achieved what they've achieved, if you met these guys in a pub, you would be going, that's just, an, they're just normal blokes. They're just Decent, good family man. Well, well, there's Get my th- bags for me, mate. <laughs> well, there's there's three brothers there, so there must there must be that family bond. But uh, Andrew, for you, is this a case of you know there was then now and you're looking to the future along with Kieran? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's pretty much uh, a, a, a sort of mixture of of all of that, Alan. We're 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 really, you know, as a band, we've we've uh, we've really had so many, in, in, you know, incredible highs and lows in our career over many, many years. And I think where we are feeling at the moment is we we really want to get really seriously back into exploring new directions and, and new music and just really, you know, finding that sort of... Uh, we're finding that direction and that sort of goal process has really been a great thing for us. And, and we obviously have, a you know, a lot of, uh, of fans and friends of sort of, of in excess people who... Are really keen on the band's music, and you know, uh, and in many different countries. And so we we haven't lost sight of our past, but we've got very much got our got our minds in the future too. You know, Andrew, so. listening to you, I know that obviously Kieran is excited, but for somebody like you who's been doing this since 1970, you sound really excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm especially since it's 12:30 in the morning or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, I am genuinely really excited, and uh, um, I think uh, you know. I, I mean, for me, you know, it, it always has been my my main interest. Uh, you know, in 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 well, in in music, and I'm incredibly fortunate to have had the guys I've I've, I've performed with, my brothers, and you know, mates who have who I've travelled with and performed with over the years, and, and many other people, you know, along the way who've who've supported in excess in, in our career. Uh, you know, you know, I, we have many, uh, um, you know, great, um, or oh, how can I put it? We, we, we owe a lot to, to, of gratitude to people and, and respect. And I feel like where we're going next is a very important move for us. I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. Well, well, I think the fan base are excited as well, and they're looking forward to whatever uh, you guys do together. But coming back to the live performance, Karen, when was your, when was your last live gig as a solo performer? Um, good question. <laughs> I th- it's a good few months ago. I think it was the spring and air break in Belfast, um, and it was the Killing Bono uh, after show party mm-hmm. type of thing, uh, where I'd, I'd written the music to Killing Bono soundtrack, and we. Uh, a lot of good friends who who uh, I've been in bands with for years, Paul Hamilton and Michael Keeney and, and, and guys like that who worked on the soundtrack played the gig with me. And, and how many people do you reckon were there? Um, a <laughs> couple of hundred. A <laughs> couple of hundred. So we'll bring it to the present. Your first gig with NXS is where? 
It's in uh, it's in Peru in South America. And how many do you think are going to be there? Well, in three days, uh, in that week in Peru, I'll be playing. We'll be playing to twelve thousand. In two days later, in Buenos Aires, we'll be playing to thirty thousand. You're not nervous, though, are you? No, not a bit. No, I'm not a bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know something? Yeah, I, 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 I am a little nervous, but it's not uh, isn't that I'm panicking or anything. Like nervous that. energy. Very much. It's, uh, it's like I said to Andrew the other day, I have no doubt in my mind once I'm out there, I'll be fine. It's that stage now where I'm going, all I want to do is get out on that stage and get one or two of them under my belt so that I'm... I can feel confident. It's, it's different for these guys, you know, in the band. These guys have known nothing but big venues, big arenas, uh, you know, thousands of people screaming. And I've never had that. And uh, and and I've certainly never walked out on stage with a band like In Excess and, and fronted the whole thing. So it's definitely going to be a baptism of fire. There's no doubt about that. Well, I'll tell you what, Northern Ireland are very, very proud of you, Kieran, and we wish you well. But I will ask you one question. Uh, about a month ago, I rang you up and asked you to, if you could come along and play uh, for myself and the team whenever we were having an outside broadcast in Port Rush. And you said, Alan, I would love to, but I'm doing something else. So it turns out that something else you were doing was working with some guys called NXS. So the next outside broadcast we have, could we book you? Because you sort of oh, owe me no. one. <laughs> we probably, you probably could, you know. <laughs> well, you know something? I I dream of the day of coming back and I genuinely mean this of coming back home to Northern Ireland to do a gig with NXS and I, I, I we haven't really talked much about it I know the management and the band mm-hmm. want to do it and believe me I really want to do it I cannot wait to do a gig and I, I've I've dreamt of walking out onto a big stage in Northern Ireland all my life and you know and this is this is the opportunity to do it and I'll be I'll be kicking these guys backsides until we're we're back home doing a gig, you know. They might never leave though once you get them here. They might like it that much. Oh, well, yeah, right, stranger sure. things have happened. Well, Andrew Farris and Kieran Gribben, thank you ever so much. And just one thing before we go, all the details are up on nxs.com.